so we're sitting here we had just got the whole starboard side of the boat completely free of all the stuff that was stacked under it uh, the gentleman that we got the boat from um, they're getting ready to move to Florida and he had so much sheet metal and tin and heat and AC stuff stacked around this boat that it was almost up to the water line in some spots and that's a good almost 10 feet in the air start loading this onto a trailer you know, 60 footer and now she's gutted completely on the inside so there isn't anything in there the engine and tranny are sitting on the ground a transmission right there and the engine is kind of up there underneath the carpet with uh, some metal under it protecting the engine but those are the ori original engine and tranny in this 1950 uh, Dutch design steel sailboat so she's been sitting here at this house for about 17 years and uh, now it's our opportunity since they're moving and they were gonna cut her up and just send her to scrap our opportunity to bring an old boat back to life it's had multiple hull soundings so the hull itself is in pretty good shape uh, a lot of the metal is still true to its thickness which makes it really nice we got some holes that were drilled in it so that she'd drain water anytime it rained down here in Oregon but uh, we'll be able to get that squared away and get the full cabin and then it all sealed up again and then she'll be right as rain. Uh, what you're viewing in these pictures is actually the 60 foot hole that we've been working on clearing out uh, the grounds around it to be able to have better access. Now all the details we had sat down with the gentleman who has it uh, at the beginning of our process in cleaning up the property. Uh, there's been some contract changes that were made that we were not comfortable with. Uh, by the time we got the contract, the price was almost double what we had originally agreed on and the payment structure that had been set up was beyond our means. So in reality, it kind of looks more like he probably didn't actually want to get rid of the boat uh, mostly because for us to put in that kind of an effort and expect through conversation that was very apparent that it would be going toward the purchase price and then resulting in getting the contract set up where it was more than double the original conversations. Um, we decided that we're just going to completely stop. Uh, he got a really good start on cleaning up his property so now he can still sell his property and he doesn't have to do it all by himself. Uh, there's a really, really good portion of his property that's been cleaned up for him. The vessel itself is more accessible so the next person who wants to buy it will be able to get in and out and get it off the property easier as far as for our plans we are going back to the original plans which I have on order currently waiting for delivery of the trimaran by Kurt Hughes here it's here it's here it's here this is so cool I cannot wait for Eric to get back he's at orientation right now so once he gets back we're gonna start ripping through our materials and God, it's beautiful oh I am so overjoyed right now we're gonna do it truck driving before, which I'm pretty sure I mentioned. Uh, I was managing a cell phone company. I backed away from that and Eric decided to do they required that he go through the temp agency for a time, but that's not how, that's not the original discussions on how he was going to get hired. 
Uh, he knew he needed to do it for about a week, but it was turning into a solid month. And he went in and he talked to them and he said, hey, I wasn't supposed to be the guy on the roof. I was supposed to be a crane operator. And we need to do something about this because, you know, that, that pay cut from the temp agency is not where I want to be right now. Because we'd had some previous discussions between the two of us that, one, I didn't want to go back into managing it. When you're a new manager and nobody knows you from Adam and Eve, then you're not going to get the respect right out the gate right away to get the teams to be responsive to you. And you have to be really good at just letting everything roll off your back. And for me, it was getting harder to do. Uh, it was getting harder for me not to bring it home. So. I decided that I was going to go ahead and back off completely and I had talked to Eric a few times on my days off I would actually run with him on some of his deliveries when he was doing it in Washington. I always said I wish I had my CDL so when you get really tired sometimes I could just take over driving and he said actually that's not a bad idea let's look into what it would take to do team driving so then we could spend the time together we could make twice as much. Also put it out there if you had any questions about truck driving truck driving school Eric is a massive resource he's done training um, he's done it for 20 years or better so he's a really really good resource not to mention he's my teacher in a lot of ways so it makes it very cool to answer questions if you guys have any uh, with that being said as we looked into the company first where we wanted to be hired to do team driving he picked out which company and when I tried to get funding for schooling to be able to do it or have them send me to school, what ended up happening is we found out that some of the companies, because of the state you live in, won't send you. Uh, they will send you for orientation for experienced driver with this particular company, but as far as for sending you to the school, you have to go through an independent. really good trucking school they have really high recommendations they're very affordable uh, the overall cost of your schooling is like 5500 and not only that but once you get done with your schooling uh, there is a promise of reimbursement of up to seven thousand dollars from the company we're at so it will eventually come back to us uh, their orientation is pretty cool. He said it was really super easy, uh, especially for an experienced driver. He kind of blazed right through it, so he's just hanging out in his hotel room. He says it's well over 100 right now. So, <laughs> if you have questions about um, trucking, because we're going to start adding in a lot of those videos too. We're going to be over the road a lot. There's going to be a lot to see. We're going to be all over the U.S. Um, we're going to have lots of really cool things, cool places to eat, you know, things like that that we're going to be able to recommend a lot. I did go in for my initial testing today at the DMV. What I want to make sure you guys are aware of too, because I was so mad at myself because I failed. I got like an 89.7% on my practice tests that I took online. I sat and read through the manual for four days, made sure I really went through the air brakes to make sure to be familiar with it. And I went into DMV. Make sure that you have a really nice teller because the one I had was a little bit snotty so I was embarrassed right out the gate before even sitting down to take my test I was having a little bit of a brain fart moment because I don't test well anyway I'm like wait a second okay so I don't need to do hazmat and I don't need to do tanker we're not doing that and she's like oh, okay well then there's only three tests that you need to take today I was like okay it's only 30 bucks it's ten dollars a test it's not bad and you can retake them right away the following day if you mess up which I did so I'm probably gonna go back in you really need to read the manual front to back three or four times pick out sections that you know you need to work on I mean really pick through the manual and then pick anybody's brain who is a truck driver ask them any questions you think you might need to know or 
hey, if you got a buddy you can do a drive ride along with, awesome. Go do it and watch everything they do. Yeah, so I get into my testing booth, which was, I found it to be a little bit obnoxious, which is why I'm gonna vent on this just for a second. I know I'm rambling horribly right now. But the funny part about it that I was so mad about was not only how noisy it is in the DMV to begin with when they have all these people testing, like, why wouldn't you put the wall to the ceiling and have a door on the little room so that it's quieter? And the second thing was, there's all these computers that are open. There was like six of them unoccupied. I'm all the way pushed on the end on computer number one against the wall. And I'm thinking, okay, hunker down. I'm already getting mad because I've got through two tests and I've made a lot of mistakes. And I'm like, man, I'm just not gonna pass this time these questions. They reword everything in a funky enough way that with enough distraction right behind you with just a glass partition that you, you, you try to refocus your, your brain on why they put certain words in a different sequence to kind of mess with you. I guess they're trying to see if you're paying attention, but it makes it that much harder to answer when you're actually on the computer. So no other computers, and then all of a sudden I've got this kid, I'm doing the biggest test, it's the third one, and I'm thinking, all right, if I ace this one, I'll be all right. And as soon as the kid sits down, he's got the, they've got the little telephone thing that's hung on the box so that you can listen for her, for people who test better listening. The problem is the volume's all the way up on it and he's not even using it. It's just making noise on the box. So it's just adding to the distraction. Now, why it was chosen that he was put on the computer right next to me, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. You, you got somebody who's halfway through their test and you got six other computers open. Why would you put them right side by side? Why would you cause that distraction in the middle of the testing? So that really bugged me. Um, but don't trust anything anybody says about how the testing is done. Point blank. Um, it really isn't like what people tell you. It's not scary hard either. It's just the, the way that the questions are asked, you really need to slow down because of what you read was worded differently. The wording on the questions and answers is completely different than how you would find it in the book. That's why it makes it hard to pass the test. So really let the vocabulary sink into your mind before you select any answers. Um, when I forced myself to do this, I did get those questions right. Hindsight being what it is. I did not do that most of the way because I thought, man, I got this down. I'm just gonna run right through it. I'll get it done real quick because I already passed my practice test. It did not work that way. So please slow down, take your time. There isn't a time limit on these tests. You can sit there as long as you need to sit there. Uh, and if you don't know and you are really struggling, there is a skip button. You can hit that button, go back to it again. Don't think you have to sit there and answer them. Um, I get too much of a rush I, and Eric pegged it on me. He knows me really well to know distractions irritate the holy bejesus out of me. Which is why when I studied in college and did all that, I took a lot of breaks, had to, you know, it's healthier that way, so you're not getting hung up on one thing. Um, it's easier to give advice than it is to follow your own sometimes, so that's another part of it. We are committed to doing the team driving. We're gonna do this. I'll at least stick with it for the first year and see if I really want to keep doing that. Um, I'm hesitating because fear is the only thing that ever holds anybody back and I'm one of those people that's extremely cautious and I have a hard time pulling the trigger on certain things. Our decisions on doing this is going to be really, really good because not only do we have the possibility of a six-figure income this time, uh, we are also making our expenses so low it's just ridiculous. The only real expenses we have is really the car, a couple of bills here and there. Uh, I think on average we're spending less than $1,500 each month on everything t together. So 
the rest of whatever we bring in, it's, it's buco bucks to go toward everything else. That's the build project, getting the best materials. We're gonna be able to really put a lot of money and effort into this. We're gonna have everything shipped to the house while we're on the road, which is gonna be really cool. Right now, we're looking at scheduling it so that we're four weeks out, one week off. So one week off, we would spend on the build. Subscribe us, make sure that you're getting your notifications. We do post pretty regularly.